What's up, people? It's your boy Jatois, and uh, I am here kind of in Kerbal Space Program. This is going to be a quick list. Now, some of you may think that I came into this game knowing a lot about the aircraft and flight. Uh, you'd be absolutely wrong. I actually came into this game not knowing a whole lot. I had the general idea of everything in my head. Uh, you know, at one point I wanted to be a pilot, and uh, those days are long gone. So. <laughs> I have uh, pretty much all that, all the ideas, all the things I'd learned at the time are pretty much gone out of my head. Uh, I came into the game pretty much knowing almost nothing, but a lot of my crazy designs are due to my absolute lack of knowing. And I just came up with an idea and I wanted it to fly and so I just made it fly. Any means necessary. But I am truly just a humble computer nerd through and through. So I just wanted to give you the top five things that I have learned thanks to KSP. And hopefully, if you have your own top five, you can throw them in the comments down below. But let's dig in. Thrust to weight ratio, TWR. It is the ratio that defines the power of a craft's engines in relation to its own weight. Since I deal mostly with jets and planes, I often overlook this. Jets and planes have the benefit of wings to assist them with their lift. If your TWR is less than one on a rocket, don't expect to go very far <laughs> or anywhere, that is. I kind of learned that a lot of times uh, before uh, once I got Kerbal Engineer. So without generating lift, you're pretty much just going to topple over and crash. So it's it's a less fantastic version of a litho break, I suppose, which you'll see later. Now with wings generating lift, Jets and planes can take off with a TWR of less than one. Uh, I actually have a craft that has the TWR of .34, and it had a lot of lift, a ton of freaking lift, and it was the Caproni CA60. And uh, I mean, an easy way to determine if your rock is going to get off the ground, go get Kerbal Engineer Redux and install it. Or you can do the math if you like math. You can do the math, and it looks like this. I'm not doing that. Yikes. No. No. <laughs> center of mass, center of lift, center of thrust. COM, COL, and COT. These three things I had to learn a lot of in order to get my aircraft to fly properly. Especially with Ferrum. It's the center of mass, center of lift, center of thrust. They say to keep your center of lift just behind your center of mass as the golden rule. I hear this quite a lot. I don't always obey that, of course. I oftentimes will align all three, my center of lift, center of mass, and center of thrust, when I'm doing a VTOL aircraft, which is vertical takeoff and landing. It's not really required, but it does give me a bit better control in my testing, but ultimately, you, you will want to kind of try to stick to the golden rule if you're designing just your basic aircraft. It will, it will definitely make a difference. Now, I have actually found that the prediction system that's in the hangar when you're building, if you angle your wings or your winglets, a lot of times the predictions will be off. It'll throw off the center of lift prediction. And this will make your design be a bit more incredible, a bit more exotic. But you will also have to do a lot more guessing and you will have to kind of make sure your center of lift is in a logical location. And then you can kind of balance out your center of mass and center of thrust so that way it's just pushing forward and lifting up in the air. And it's fantastic things. It was a lot to learn and it still is a lot of learning I do on the regular basis because the Caproni looked like it wouldn't have flown and yet it flew. I learned a lot on that one. Eccentricity. To be honest, I hate the word. I absolutely hate the word. Period. I hate trying to pronounce it, uh, but it is really simple way to think. It is how elongated your orbit is. The orbital eccentricity of an astronomical object is a parameter that determines the amount by which its orbit around another body deviates from a perfect circle. So the value of zero is a circular orbit. 
values between 0 and 1 are an elliptical orbit. 1 is a parabolic escape orbit, and anything greater than 1 is a hyper, hyper, hyperbola, hyperbola, hyperbola. Yeah, you see, you see, these things, these things that I've been trying to learn. <laughs> now, before KSP, hyperbola? Dang, we just found a cure for Ebola. Now we have hyperbola? Are you serious? I didn't see this in the news. I didn't see this in the news. After KSP, now I kind of know it's a thing, and I know it's not some super version of Ebola coming to kill me. Makes me feel a lot more safe in this world. <laughs> Litho breaking, my favorite thing in the world. Litho breaking is what happens when the ground runs up to stop your aircraft. Uh, now, litho breaking is what has happened to most of my early craft. It's the most certain way you will stop because, well, the best way to stop is to run to something more solid and with more mass than you. <laughs> so it will definitely bring you to a stop. Besides, it's, it's not the flight that kills you, it's the certain and inevitable and sudden stop. Now, you will find in KSP the ground is more than willing to assist you in your endeavors if you want a litho break. Run out of fuel? Litho break! Out of control? Litho break! Not enough lift? Litho break! Except you will break what you were attempting to break and forsake your poor Kerbal. But anyway, any landing you can walk away from is a successful one. Delta V, well, it's not a strike force, and it's not an anime. I would have gone for either, because they really sound freaking awesome. <laughs> now, if you thought that calculating TWR was a complete pain in the arse, Delta V is the change in velocity that has or can be exerted by an aircraft. We measure it in meters per second, or ms. M-S is what you'll see us a lot of. If you like formulas, I don't like formulas. I hate formulas. I don't like math. But let's look at the formula. That's the formula right here. Now, if you're like me, your brain's right now screaming, please get that off the screen. So I just did you a favor and got rid of it it's off the screen. So let's <laughs> look at a simple, that is the simple equation. So that is not a happy time for me when I first started KSP because I looked straight at that and I said, no, this is not going to happen. I actually started by guessing how much fuel I would need, taking the flight, and then I started adjusting from there. It's chaotic. It's hilarious and it's a lot of fun if you have the patience for it. And by using that method, I was able to get to all the planets. So it was the longest way to do it, probably. And it is possible to be done. Uh, I mean, the community is great. They will gladly help you out. So definitely reach out if you're having trouble. But definitely do your research. Try things out. You will have a lot of fun. That is the spirit of this game. For me, it's actually easier to get an SSTO to orbit than to play around with a rocket, mostly because I do so many airplanes that SSTOs just feel a bit more natural for me. So, that is my top five. As a bonus, I'll give you the Kraken. That Kraken will find you at your best time. It will find you at your craft when it's doing its most fantastic and the Kraken will take your craft, ball it up, and blow it up in the most fantastic way possible. Sometimes, your Kerbin will fall straight to a planet and land at the middle and blow up into a puff of dust. Sometimes, your Kerbin will get lost in the orbit, or further. Sometimes, you'll have an explosion that will launch a piece faster than light speed. It's happened to me. Sometimes, you'll come out of, you'll come out of time warp, and your craft will shake itself apart. That's the Kraken. The Kraken is everywhere. The Kraken is an unfortunate event that has happened with seemingly no reason. No rhyme, no reason. The Kraken will find you and it will have fun and it will be hilarious. All you can do is laugh at it and go at it again. Be sure to press F5 to quick save. Then you can F9 to bring it back up and pray for the best. <laughs> if worst comes to worst, edit the config file. Edit the save file. It's, you can do it. None of these things are too hard. But anyhow, that is all. That is my top five and a bonus that things that I have learned in KSP. I have enjoyed this game. I'm over 2,000 
um, uh, hours in this game and it's like 2200 something and I have enjoyed every last moment playing this game. I'm actually now getting into modding the game so you might see some mods from me coming out soon. My first being a high altitude drop probe that you may see in my last video. That's me talking about a lot about balls. It's my hyper, it's my probe balls here. This is really, really awkward. But anyhow, if you like what you see, hit that like button, drop me in the comment, let me know what you think. What were your top five things that you have learned when uh, after playing KSP and uh, let us all know in there down there in the comments and I hope to catch you guys in the next video for now this has been your boy to and I'm out this is like the biggest FaceTime you've ever seen so hopefully I didn't horrify anyone I'm, I'm scared I'm just... peace wrong finger peace And we're gonna lose. You know what? You know what? We just we're going for it. We're going for it. Uh, nine to fire everything. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! 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 Wait. <laughs>